Hey there, folks, and welcome to a follow-up update on the seismic swarm that's been going on this week underneath Mount Rainier in Washington State. Today is Friday, July 11th. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me today. And we had a uh, earthquake swarm underneath Mount Rainier that started on Tuesday, July 8th. I did a short video to explain that a little bit, but we have some more data. The swarm is continuing, but uh, it has decreased markedly over what it was on Tuesdays. So we're seeing smaller earthquakes, less frequent earthquakes overall, and that's probably likely to continue. So at some point, this thing is likely to fizzle out. But let's go through some of the latest data from the USGS. Let me give you a little bit of bit background and some information here. So we've had about 391 total quakes. Let me get the... Here's our location here. Uh, let's change it to satellite view so you can see the big, beautiful mountain there. So there's our about 390 or so earthquakes over the past week that we've had underneath the Mount Rainier region. Um, the largest of these was a 2.3, actually two of them, one on the 8th, one on the 9th. Uh, the rest have been smaller magnitude than that. The swarm basically peaked on Tuesday where they were getting about 30 earthquakes per hour and now it's down to just a few earthquakes per hour so the the frequency has decreased markedly depths of these earthquakes are anywhere from anywhere from about one and a half down to four miles or two to six kilometers in depth or below that's all below the summit so that's from the summit down so very shallow earthquakes and to be very clear here there's no evidence of any ground deformation or any other evidence that suggests you know magma is on the move that there's any sort of volcanic unrest these quakes which have been analyzed by the usgs and others are uh, thought to be related to fluids moving underneath the the mountain and the volcano you get the meltwater from the ice and such so there's our view with the usgs site uh just a different view with the pacific uh size pacific northwest seismic network you can see the mountain there the triangles are some of their seismic stations so if you wanted to you could look at one of the seismograms in real time so here is a seismogram just moving across this is by hours so this is like you know eight o'clock last night pacific daylight time it's over here's utc time uh, and you can see all these little blips so some of these tiny little earthquakes here some uh, bigger ones on here um, but you can actually see in real time any one of those seismic stations recording from these uh, from these seismic events that are happening underneath Mount Rainier. Notice we have this thing pretty well instrumented with uh, seismograph stations uh, surrounding the summit. So these quakes are being felt uh, and recorded quite nicely by the instrumentation that we have there. Um, and so far, it looks like this event has exceeded. There was another seismic swarm here in 2009. But this week's seismic swarm actually exceeds that in terms of having more earthquakes, more total energy. So cumulative energy from those quakes is higher than in 2009 and a higher rate of earthquakes. The number of earthquakes per hour exceeds that from 2009. So the, the, the headlines will say this is the, the largest seismic swarm in Mount Rainier's history. It's a bit misleading though, because we've only really had good instruments on Mount Rainier since the late eighties. We don't have a lot of data. It's a pretty small sample size, you know, 40 plus years of data. Uh, given that this you know volcano hasn't erupted for like a thousand years or something we'd like a lot more data than that ideally so there's not a lot of data there but nonetheless technically it is the largest seismic swarm to hit mount rainier with the caveat being since we've been recording earthquakes and it's been instrumented well so a couple of views there with the different um uh, seismic networks showing things let's take you to the latest USGS report that just came out this morning uh, just kind of really reiterates a lot of what I've said already. So this, this swarm continues to decrease in terms of the rate. Um, and here's, they talk about it exceeding the 2009 swarm, everything else I've kind of mentioned here. Uh, and again, this is probably the most important thing here. So we don't become alarmist about this thing. Currently no indication that the swarm is associated with magmatic unrest. So this appears to be uh, earthquakes generated by uh, fluids, probably hydrothermal fluids, hot water that's being heated up by the hot rock that's inside the volcano. Uh, those fluids moving through fractures, through pre-existing faults, other structural weaknesses, uh, and generating these very small earthquakes, none of which are being felt by anyone 
in the region. Uh, the USGS did put together a really nice uh, graphic here. Let me make that a little bit smaller. So they have a, a combination of map and cross section. So here is a map view of the summit region. The blue dots are all the earthquakes they've recorded on, at Mount Rainier since 2020. And then the, the stars there, the orange stars, are the current swarm. And this just goes through Tuesday and Wednesday. So this leaves out the Thursday, Friday quakes. Um, but that collects mainly the, the lion's share of those quakes. So you can kind of see where they're concentrated, very tightly clustered, both in time and in space. So there's the map view. Then they have a cross-section view uh, east-west there, kind of showing where these sit with relative to depth. I think this one over here is a north-south uh, cross-section view. Uh, so they just, you can kind of see where these earthquakes are occurring uh, with depth below the mountain itself. So there's a profile of the mountain and the location of those previous earthquakes over the last five years, and then the earthquakes that came through just this week. And then the final thing the USGS put together that, that's pretty nice is a series of graphs that show you um, since this whole thing started on Tuesday, July 8th. So you can see the earthquakes in terms of their magnitudes. You can see uh, the Lots of earthquakes coming in. The swarm's really kind of hitting its peak or climax through this period. There's the, the biggest quake there. Uh, there's another one there that's similar magnitude. Um, and then you can see things kind of dissipate, right? So you can see there's a, a gradual decrease in the frequency or number of earthquakes over time. Uh, the, the, the cumulative energy dies down a little bit. Another graph here showing the same data, but plotting up instead of earthquake magnitude, just number of earthquakes per hour. So it peaks on July 8th with about 30 earthquakes per hour. And then you can see it kind of, you know, going up and down quite a bit, but definitely a decrease in the total number of earthquakes per hour. And then I'll put a link to this in the video description, but they've got, uh, you know, frequently asked questions, things that you might want to know about it. Is it, you know, is it safe? Is this normal? Are we expecting more quakes? Um, some of the things which I've answered here, but you can check those out for yourself. So looks like this thing's probably winding down, but of course these are volcanoes. These are volcanoes that are known to be active, at least on geologic timescales, and they do warrant concern. And we do want to keep an eye on these things. But as it stands right now, it looks like this was just a very small uh, isolated event of earthquakes, not necessarily a precursor to anything larger that's going to happen in the very near future, but it's a volcano. So we'll keep tabs on it, keep looking at the data, and we'll see how things go. Thanks for your support of the channel. Thanks for checking on things here and be well. Thanks so much. Bye.